I have played my fair share of PlayStation games and maybe other games, and I'm going to go over my top 10 favorite of all time that I've played so far. I haven't played a lot of games, but maybe about 102 Platinums at the moment as of this video, which is a lot, but I will be also going over maybe games that I haven't Platinum, but I have played through the story. I can actually rank those. Games that I haven't played that are known to be really good, if they're not on the list, then I probably haven't played them. Because if they're that good, they might actually be on this list. But because I haven't played them, I can't really put them on this list. And I haven't played like a ton of games, but like a ton of the big games. But um, this is just my personal list of the games I've played and how much I enjoyed them. The story, the even the side stories, the, the graphics, the gameplay. Uh, uh, how the action is, the customization is a big thing for me. I like customizing my characters and well, whatever else it is in the game. Let's get straight into the list. At number 10, I've got Until Dawn. Now, Until Dawn is a horror game. It's like a telltale game where you choose your own ending. Uh, you choose your conversation and that usually leads to a ripple effect. This game was very different in a way where the entire game is actually affected by what you do from the first second third fourth fifth episode not like the telltale games where they kind of had a dialogue change but this game had a massive impact like if you chose to shot a rat in the first episode it would lead to the main character having like a scratch on her face and i remember when i was going for this platinum i had such a hard time with it you know as hard as the platinum was it was frustrating but it was very enjoyable the story was very good and um if you go for the platinum you get to experience all the endings as well which is good you kind of like forced on that um you know bit where you have to either get everyone to live get one person to live have no one live have all the guys live have all the girls live and you get to go through all the different playthroughs which is tedious but you get to experience all the different story outcomes which is good uh the characters were good the acting was really good like in these horror games usually the acting can be kind of cheesy and campy but this game was perfect this is probably my favorite horror game that i've played of all time uh and they are making a remastered version which i might be playing that as well because man this game was so good number nine i got horizon zero dawn and i don't have horizon forbidden west on this list just because i it didn't feel the same like Zero Dawn did. And Zero Dawn's a game that, again, I the same as Until Dawn, I didn't really even hear of much before I played it, uh, before my mate told me about it. Um, so it came free on PlayStation Plus. So I was like, all right, I'll give it a go. And I was not expecting how good this game was. The story was good gameplay was good the customization was fantastic uh, the side missions going for all the little quests and the collectibles everything about this game was just amazing the graphics as well i mean horizon zero dawn now if you go back at it it's probably not as good forbidden west's graphics are amazing now probably the best graphics i've seen in a game but Zero Dawn, at that time, the graphics were amazing. The landscape, the art style, the soundtrack as well was beautiful. It was brilliant. Uh, even the characters, the characters were good. Aloy was good. Uh, the side characters were a bit eh. That's why it's a bit higher up on this list. But the story itself was pretty decent. I think it's one of those where it's kind of slowish at the start, kind of filling you in on the origin stories and stuff. But... Yeah, at number eight, we have Spider-Man. This is the 2018 uh, game, not the second one, not Miles. Uh, the the first one. Now, you won't see Spider-Man 2 on this list, only because I'm trying to stay clear of being biased. Honestly, you can interchange literally anyone for anything. Like, you can put Spider-Man 2 for Spider-Man 1, vice versa. It's personal preference but in my opinion spider-man 1 is better than spider-man 2 just because you've got more time i felt like it was longer i felt like the story was longer the side missions you had more stuff to do like you had to get i'm talking in terms of platinum because i go for all these platinums 100 percent everything uh 
Spider-Man 2, you kind of just finish it in like 20 hours and it's just like, damn, I kind of wanted more because the game was so good. You just needed more. But then short and sweet, you guess is good in a way. But I felt like Spider-Man 2 was just the perfect superhero game, the perfect game. But that's why it's number eight because it only gets better from here. Number seven, Ghost of Tsushima game. I literally just finished. It was my last platinum. I 100%ed it. I also did Iki Island. I did Legends, the multiplayer mode. I did every DLC pack. I completed this game top to bottom. Got all the outfits, all the sword kits, literally everything you can think of. Uh, I even did in Legends mode some of the the nightmare ones. I got some of those outfits. Uh, they were pretty challenging, but they were fun. Like, but this game, I tell you, had everything. This game had an amazing multiplayer, highly underrated. People still play it right now. If you go into a game and search for players, you'll find players straight away. And my God, playing this with a group of four, group of two, group of three, I think you can only play three or four or two because the story mode is only two player and four player for the, the Tales of EO. My god, that was even a good story itself. I played that first, then I went into the the single player. I know I did it back to front. Most people will play the, the single player first, then get into the uh, multiplayer, but I did it the other way around because I thought the Legends was really hard. So I wanted to, um, I wanted to like knock out the hard bit first and then do the single player later. But the Legends was brilliant mode. Uh, the single player, the aesthetic of the game, the story, the ending. Like, it did start off a bit slow. I was a bit getting, uh, struggling to get through the game, but the, the combat might be the best combat in any game I've ever played. Like, how smooth it is swinging your katana around. Uh, just going through Mongols like, like nothing. Like, later in the game when your legend grows and you're just killing Mongols, and then the rest of them get scared and they run away. I think that's like the coolest feature you can have in a game. Like this game had so many sick features. Uh, the stealth as well. This is like a Japanese Assassin's Creed game basically. If you put Assassin's Creed, I wouldn't tell the difference. Like I would, it'd be like one of the best Assassin's Creed games. But uh, by itself, my God, this is probably the best uh, Japanese uh, samurai game I've ever played. Uh, uh, Jin Sakai, great, great hero or anti-hero. He kind of went a bit rogue there where he turned into the ghost. Uh, it was great. It was a great game. But number six, speaking of Telltale games and choose your own ending games, I got The Walking Dead Telltale Season 1, an iconic game. Old, but honestly, it's one of the best games. Uh, maybe not gameplay because there isn't much gameplay. It's more of a movie game. Like, when people talk about movie games, this is an actual movie game, not games like God of War and stuff. They're not movie games. This is a movie game, but it's also a good game, and the story is one of the best stories in any games. Uh, for me, a little bit biased because I'm a big Walking Dead fan, and this was, I think this was my first ever Platinum. I'm pretty sure it is. I think... It could be, I'm not sure, but I've done this game like twice. I did it on the PS Vita and the PS4. Uh, hmm. The story was amazing. Like, it's with Lee and Clementine, two best characters. Uh, I don't think they'll ever make a Walking Dead game quite like this ever again. Like, the follow up games after this were also really good as well. Uh, but season one, just, just brilliant story for a game. Number five, I actually have Assassin's Creed 2, another game I played fairly recently, about middle of last year, I think I finished Assassin's Creed 2. Uh, kind of the first in the order of games, like I can't play Assassin's Creed 1 because I think it's only on PS3, it's not on the PS4 or PS5, so I can't really play it, but I have only played like I think three or four Assassin's Creed games, and this is one of the best uh, Assassin's Creed games. Uh, there is another Assassin's Creed game I'll get into, which I think is my favorite to just play and enjoy. But in terms of quality of game, this game was so fun. It was so chill. Uh, the story was brilliant. 
uh, Ezio, the assassins, everything was amazing. Uh, it was either this or I was putting Brotherhood in. I was going to put both in. Um, but again, interchangeable put Brotherhood in. I wouldn't. I wouldn't complain. This Brotherhood was also a fucking good game that I played in this trilogy. I have played all three in the Ezio trilogy. My next game up is I think Assassin's Creed Three, so I haven't played that yet. I haven't played anything after yet. I know Black Flag is apparently a really good game, but I haven't played it yet, so I can't rank it. Number four, a game that I actually haven't platinumed yet, and I don't think I will unless I play the remastered version. That is, of course, The Last of Us. Now, The Last of Us is uh, an old game. Like, I'm talking about the first one, the first remastered, not the new remastered for the PS5. If I get that, I'll platinum that. But this one, I'm not platinum. I'm not touching the platinum on this. It's too hard. I'm not doing the multiplayer stuff. Uh, <laughs> I just can't be bothered with it. It's, you know, uh, I don't even think the multiplayer is even up let alone have people in the servers. I don't think there is. I don't think I can bother it anyway. But I've played through the story. I've completed the story and the DLC mission. I'm, I believe I think I've done the DLC with uh, Ellie. Um, but yeah, brilliant story. It was ahead of its time. It came out a long time ago as well. Uh, it still holds up to this day. Even the old PS3 version, you can play it. It's still fine. Um, but yeah, Last of Us. Great Platinum, if you haven't, got, not Great Platinum, great game, I haven't got the Platinum, but if you haven't played it, this is a game, I don't know what you're doing if you haven't played it. And now we're getting to the top three, I've got at number three, God of War 2018, the first of the New Age God of War series games, again another one that could be interchangeable, you could put God of War 3 in there, you could put God of War Ragnarok there in that position. But you'll see from my reasoning later on, uh, God of War 2018, in my opinion, had better customization than Ragnarok. Uh, but then Ragnarok came out with a new DLC, which God of War didn't have a DLC, which is another thing. Uh, but some aspects of 2018 God of War, I did enjoy more, like the, the maze realm. I can't remember which realm it was. It might have been Niflheim. Where you go in and the maze like kind of changes and you kind of had to go in there to grind gear to get like that rare material. And you could get like the Zeus armor, the, the glowing animated stuff, like the glowing animated stuff on armors are my my favorite in games. I don't really like like the blends, the same armor with a different color. I like animated kind of like unrealistic stuff. I like seeing that shit in games. And that had a lot of that, and it was really good. Um, the story as well, beautiful story, most perfect. Like, you play the game, you finish the game, and you're just sitting there like, that was the most, like, perfect. Like, if I wanted to watch a movie, like, that could easily be a movie. It's literally one of the best stories in movies, television, games ever, really, if we're being honest. But, and as well, gameplay, it was new in the God of War franchise. I have played some of the other God of Wars. I've played God of War 1, I've got the Platinum. I haven't got two, I've got three. I've got Platinum for God of War 3 on the PS4, I believe. Um, Really good game as well. But God of War 2018, number three, I think it's perfect there. Number two, would you believe it? God of War Ragnarok. Now, this game could easily be number one, so this could be interchangeable again with number one and number two. You'll see number one later. Uh, everyone's opinion is different. This game was so hyped. Uh, God of War 2018 didn't have as much hype for me. I, I played it like a couple years ago when I first played I think 2020. I played it during lockdown. Um, the thing is with Ragnarok, it had the hype of the last game. So because I played the last game, I was waiting badly for this game and i was really hyped and i think this is the case for everyone when they get to that like another thing like they get to the ragnarok scene it was honestly the most goosebump uh coolest shit you ever see like where he ri uh, rings the galahorn oh man i tell you my the whole ragnarok sequence my jaw was on the floor it was so brilliant it was just perfect 
Sindri and Brock, uh, Brock's death, spoiler alert, um, beautifully done, uh, side missions, and then if we're talking DLC on top of that, which I have also completed, DLC was just something else, it was just so brilliant, uh, going back to the Greek stuff was cool to see, uh, the customization in this game was good, they gave us the, the old Kratos look, the Ghost of Sparta look, uh, they just gave us everything. They really blessed us with Cold War Ragnarok, and um, it really was worth the wait. But number one, before we get to number one, actually, I would like to go over my honorable mentions. And the first one I'm going to talk about is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And a lot of people would disagree, but I will die on this hill. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the best Assassin's Creed game so far that I've played. Only because I'm a bit biased with the Greek mythology stuff, but the DLCs were fantastic in um, Odyssey. The story was beautiful. My God, the story, all the, even all the side missions, like I did everything, 100% of this game, like completely every DLC pack, every New Game Plus, whatever. I did everything and it was long. That's the only con about this game is that it's kind of long and drawn out. Um, I don't see the problem with these the Assassin's Creed games going RPG. I'm kind of more of a fan of the RPG element. I'm also a fan of like the old Assassin's Creed games. But I kind of like both, so I don't really mind if they go one way or another. But the RPG, the customization was just on another level. Like the armies you could get, you could customize everything. You get the cooler stuff like the Artemis, the Zeus armor, gold. Uh, this gold with like feathers or something on it. Um, depending on who you play, I don't, I don't know if there's different armors for Cassandra or Alexios. But not even that, the DLC armors like the glowing, uh, the glowing armor you get from Elysium. The weapons, bro, you could get the sickest weapons in Elysium at the Forge. I think it was there was at the Hephaestus Forge. Um, the story and the DLC were so good, man. Uh, even the ending, the fact you can get like four different endings, I believe, is really cool. Like, I don't think any Assassin's Creed game had that and still has that, which is weird because it's such a cool element to having games. Uh, I feel like the detail is just insane. Like, even if you go in the, the directory mode thing, the tour. You can literally get a tour of Greece, like an accurate tour of Greece, like you're watching the History Channel. Like the landscape, the boat missions were cool. Uh, having to like go around all of Greece in a boat was really cool. Um, I'm Greek, so I'm going to be a bit biased with these things. But I don't know. I'll die on that hill, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I'm rambling on too much about Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but to me it was a good game. Other honorable mentions of Spider-Man 2, we already spoke about that. Again, you can change it in and out with whatever one. Some people will put it first. I think that's recency bias. But um, a game that almost made the list, two games, Star Wars Jedi Survivor and Jedi Fallen Order, um, could easily be number 10 or even top 3. But there's just so many good games, man. I, it's really hard to rank these things. But... Jedi Fallen Order was just so good. Uh, I'd probably put that higher than Jedi Survivor at the moment, but Jedi Survivor had other things that were cool, like uh, Cal Kestis's character development in Jedi Survivor, like the, the, the from him being like a little bitch kind of, and then he's turning into a man in this game. Uh, the combat, of course, the the lightsaber combat is just so fun. It's like on par with. Ghost of Tsushima, the combat is just so satisfying, just chopping through uh, stormtroopers like it's nothing. Uh, I think they did fix the dismemberment uh, in Jedi Survivor where they actually get uh, torn apart rather than uh, it kind of being like a sponge blade in Fallen Order, but Fallen Order had like the best story. Uh, interchangeable, it doesn't mean like any of like, the bottom half of the list are bad, they're just. I just got too many games, honestly, and these are just my top. So, number one, Batman Arkham Knight. Basic, everyone probably puts this as their number one, but it really is number one. It's there for a reason. Everyone goes on about it for a reason. 
you play it to this day. It's a game from, made from like 2017, 2018. I can't remember, but it is one of the best games. It really is. Um, the story was just perfect. It's like God of War. Like it was the most perfect story you could put together. So well written. Uh, so much detail in the story. Uh, uh good callbacks, good villains. The graphics still hold up to this day, which is is just mind boggling. How games like uh, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, and Gotham Knights didn't have as should should have better graphics. And Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League does have good graphics from what I've seen, but compared to Batman Arkham Knight, it just doesn't compare. It, I don't know. They just made this banger and just. That's it. No more good Batman games after this. And it's a game that I think I played twice. I played the story twice. The second time, I 100% of the game got the platinum. I didn't 100% of the DLC packs because there were just too many. Um, and you have to, I think you have to pay for them anyway. Um, but they were so fun. Even like the hard stuff about the game, like the AR challenges, I think they were the most difficult. It was one of the trophies we had to like hit 20 different moves in the same free flow combat which was stupid hard uh it had me stressing like i don't think i've ever been so stressed in my life apart from uh god of war 3 maybe uh but batman arkham knight takes the cake i, I don't think there'll be any game i'll be very surprised that there's a game that can come close to topping batman arkham knight but at the moment batman arkham knight Best game of all time, no doubt about it. So, um, yeah, that's my list. Uh, top 10 games. I'll quickly run through it now if you forgot because I've been rambling on for so long. Until Dawn, Horizon Zero Dawn, Spider Man, Ghost of Tsushima, Walking Dead Telltale Season 1, Assassin's Creed 2, The Last of Us, God of War 2018, God of War Ragnarok, and Batman Arkham Knight. So that's my list. If you enjoyed this, you want more videos like this, leave a like, subscribe. Make sure you turn that notification bell on if you want more. And I'll see you guys next time. Get out of here.